tonight, I'm going to bounce over to Doug Miller. Doug's with us tonight. He's going to handle our demonstration. What's spinning, buddy? How do? How to do? Um, don't ask me what the wood is. <laughs> um, I don't know. This is a piece that was in my my uh, store back here behind me in my little shelf. I just grabbed it. It was a little half log. I, I went ahead and turned it uh, enough to get it round. Got a uh, tenon on, on the side, uh, the bark side of it. Went ahead and flipped it around. Uh, and that's where we are. Right now we've got, what, uh, three and a half-ish by inch and something, a little over a quarter. Um, it, you know, it, it, it's just bigger than what we need. Um, a couple of months ago, uh, we talked about, uh, in I think it was a, a side discussion, about jars, make doing jar lids, just a little easy, beginner-type, quick um, uh, type of projects. Uh, here is a jar that was given to me several years ago. Some some children decorated it. Uh, but it's just got a boring metal jar lid. Um, so we're going to do something about that jar lid. These can be done. Um, put something in the jar for a Christmas present. Uh, a, a bag of, of dry beans. Uh, some uh, uh, hot chocolate mix. Uh, jelly Billy, beans. Billy uh, M&M's. Billy Burt wants M&M's. M&M's will work. And it's, <laughs> um, uh, spice tea mix. Get some instant tea and some, if you can find a jar of tang, mix those two together and throw in some cinnamon. Uh, fill that up with that, with the instructions on how to mix it. Of course, you'll have to do a little experimenting to get it right. Um, you know, and you got a, a neat present. But this is still boring. We need to do something with it. Um, yeah, we can fill it up with the jar up with enough goodies that it's, you know, acceptable, but the jar lid is still boring. And if you do something with it, it can be recycled year after year after year. My niece gave me a series of four jars in a, uh, in a rack that she found in some store. Um, and she, she took uh, some uh, quilting, the batting, and, and put it on there and then put some other material on top of that. And it was really neat. And we recycled those jars for several years. Um, I think after I got them back for the third time, the, the um, whatever it was that was holding the material on the lid uh, just kind of fell apart. And so that was gone. Um, so that's gone. But this will not go away. This is going to be here forever. We're going to keep this lid handy uh, for some measurement. I've taken a rough measurement. Uh, all, there we go. Already, we're going to mark it on here. Uh, and like I said, this is a rough estimate or rough measurement. Um, I, I'm going to I'm going to turn out the inside of this to put this lid into. Um, but this I know this is too small, so we're going to we're going to go to this size and then we're going to uh, bring it up. Now, first things first. There's a wedding band. It's taking coming off and going in my pocket. Um, I've been all right. I like that. There you go. I've been a little slack lately. I've, I've been halfway or two thirds through my project when I realized I still had it on. Um, and I thought, oh my goodness, what am I doing? It, you know, in your shop, you are in charge of your own safety. I understand that. And I'm going to agree to that. Uh, at the same time, I'm going to tell you, I've caught that ring a couple of times. I've been very fortunate. It hasn't done any serious damage, but it doesn't feel good. And so uh, I think Eddie has seen some some uh, scary situations uh, from some guys he's worked with in the past. So I'm just not going to do it. Typically, every once in a while I forget, but I'm going to uh, uh, correct myself when I can. Kind of like wearing my head face shield. There it is. We see it. We see it. All right. <laughs> there we go. Um, first thing I want to do, I want to take a parting tool and just make a mark and, and just get a start here. Well, he's getting started, folks. Let me explain that he is shooting this on a iPhone or a portable phone. That's what's been mounted, and that's what he's working with. You don't need a lot of equipment to do a demonstration for us. All you need is the talent. Were you just talking about my iPhone, Eddie? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to change that. Uh, about the first of the year, um, but it won't be a major change. I, I'm hoping to add 
uh, a second camera into the mix. Okay, we're getting pretty close. Uh, let's just continue. This side is still rough. I haven't done a thing to it. Uh, it's, it's just the way it was, where it was chainsawed in half. So uh, let me get some more of this wood off of here. All right, see where we are. And I'm gonna, I'm, I'm working with the top of the lid to go in there because I want, you know, this is gonna be what's coming out to connect to the jar. Still a little small, but I've got it all clean on the inside. This is like most anything of this nature. It just, it's just a little fiddly to get it started. Once you get your size, you're in great shape. It's still just a hair small, but I'm awful close. It's got to go a lot deeper too. I'm starting to be able to smell that wood. I think it's hickory, which would explain why it's so stinking hard. Okay, yeah, that's just a hair big, but that's okay. Big is okay, because I've got all this top surface I can glue to. Now, where's my, okay. Got the, got the width. We're just working on getting the depth on here. I want this as flat as possible as well. So I'm just kind of trying to keep it flat as I go. I'm turning, in case anybody's curious, I'm turning at 1400 right now. It could be faster, it could be slower, just whatever you're, whatever you're comfortable with.
just getting a couple of ridges out that I was seeing. We're still just a little, because it, it dips down right here on this side. This is a high side over here and a low side over here. On this low side, I've still got eh, an eighth of an inch, so i got to go a little deeper. about to the fun part. All right, I still got just a touch there. I'm going to straighten up this edge right here. Uh, just a couple of, couple of passes, I think I ought to do it just to clean that up and get it straight so that we're comparing apples to apples here. I believe that's about perfect. It's got a little wiggle worm room there, but by the time we get some thick CA on there, we'll be golden. All right. Any questions to this point? Looking good Nothing to me. Nothing close to Doug. I'm sorry, Dane, what'd you say? Nothing's been posted. Okay, all right. Um, kind of interesting. There's a knot, and it looks like some bug something problems there. In fact, I filled a, a wormhole right there with some coffee grounds, and there's a little bit over on the other side here. But on the inside, you can see that worm has made a mess in there. But again, that's going to be covered up, so I'm not too worried about it. What I am going to do is turn this around going the wrong way. I'm going to close this. I think I can grab them. I hope I can grab them. Nope, not going to be able to. So I got to go the other way here. I've got, I am very fortunate. I've got a lot of chuck, but I'm very unfortunate in that I don't have a lot of jaws. I've got a whole bunch of 50 millimeter jaws, which just drives me nuts. You one could of these modify. Days, you could, you could modify one of them if you've got a bunch of them. Well, I've got a bunch of them. Um, Just add stuff to the outside or the inside or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sacrificial jaws. Yeah. At one time, I, I did the silly thing of purchasing those nylon jaws that Nova sold. Yeah. And and they're good until you cut them down one time. And then you can't make them big again. Yeah. So they, didn't they didn't last long. Okay. You should have asked the so guy about are. the other set. There's only two sets sold. You should have asked the other guy. Well, I think I was. That was me. I think I bought them both. He was the second uh, guy, Eddie. Yeah. Uh, wood jaws. I've been I've been thinking seriously about making some wood jaws that would be 
uh, like three or four layers thick so I could cut it down, you know, keep going. And then I could just knock that, those top two layers off and, and make some, some others, but I just haven't done it. Okay. The inside is done. The, the edge, well, I just saw a place on the edge. It's not done. Let's turn it back around. This is easy enough to do at this point. You got plenty of time, Doug. Something. Take your time. Yeah. I thought I got it, but I just I'm, I missed one little section. And when I had it the other way, it, it showed up right there, a little place that I, I didn't get. So we'll we'll cut that down real quick. There we go. There we go. Just dress that up just a little bit. Went ahead and knocked that edge down so that I won't cut myself. Lock my spindle, then I can use that as my third hand. That's one nice thing about having a spindle lock. I can use that and, and save myself a whole lot of trouble. I've done this very procedure how many times without using that lock. There we go. And uh, it can be done, it's just a pain. All right, now we unlock that, make sure we're clear, everything looks good. That dark brown worm issue is, I think, gonna make it, make a nice feature on there. And there is still a little hole beside where I cleaned it out. Let me just check that while I'm here, it's right up on the edge. Oh, it goes way deep, oh, it goes all the way through, lovely. Like I said, a feature. We'll figure out something. I may put some more uh, coffee grounds in there. All right. So now we can just turn that. Again, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna continue with my half inch bowl gouge. That's just the tool that I like. While I'm here, let me just uh, do to do. There we go. Now I can get back on camera where you all can see what I'm doing. Just going to check how thick I am. And I've got good three. I've got close to an inch there to play with. So take all. I can take all of this tenon plus another half an inch real easily. I got more than enough thickness. I can take a good bit of thickness off as well. Then there's that question, how tight do you expand just before you hear that first pop? Mm. That's the scary part, isn't it? <laughs> mm. All right. See what we can do here. Unlock. Everything's clear. Now we can go at it.
game loose again because I'm, I'm, I'm cutting it out and I'm pulling the wood right off the right off the chuck. See how close we can get to that pop without getting there. All right. And to the closer, the thinner I go on that edge, the more likely it is to pop. So I don't want to go too much thinner, even though I got a little bit of room. But I'm almost where I want to be anyway. A little bit lighter cut than what I was making so that I don't pull it off again. A little bit of a sheer scrape just to clean it up a little bit, but I want to change, I want to put a little bit of a OG curve in this top. There we go. Just a little bit here. Little cuts here. All right, now. Doug, may I for once moment, please? Yes, sir. All right, well, Turners, members, you see what Doug is doing? I want variations on the theme from you. Variations on the theme. Doug is turning this cover. Put your brains to work. When he gets done, we want to hear your variations to where you can twist it a little bit, change it a little bit, decorate it a little bit. Aha. Uh -huh. So that's it. Variations on a theme. And we want to see what you come up with. Doug, let's go back to it. Pardon me. Okay. You know, you're fine. Um, I'm going to I'm going to do just a little bit of sanding. I don't want to uh, uh, bore everybody to death. That hole in the side's gotten a little bigger. That's funny. Um, I'm going to, I am going to sand it, but very quickly. I'm not going to do a complete sanding job because uh, I can bring it back and sand it some more here a bit later. Now, if I was doing production where I was trying to batch out 20 or 30 of these, 50 of these, I'd probably leave it at 1,400. And, and make sure I was very light on my sandpaper. Um, but if you're not in production mode, if you're doing one off uh, or even two or three off, go ahead and turn it down. I've got it now, it's still a little fast. It's at 840, there's 640. I would normally turn my vacuum on and have my air cleaner on. It's about, well, it's exactly five feet in front of me. Uh, between those two, they do an excellent job of collecting all the dust all the dust. If you could see my floor, you'd say it doesn't do too good a job. Um, so I've turned a whole bunch of, of uh, Christmas trees. And so all of that, I got a trash can over there full of shavings and the floor could still, I could about fill a, another trash can up. But I was turning those at 2000 RPMs. I, I turned five at a time without turning the lathe off using a step center in my headstock, that spring-loaded center. It does a phenomenal job of giving you just enough room where you can get the blank out or get a new blank in, take the old uh, the one you just turned out. Um, I 
But there again, uh, um, I know I'm asked quite often, why do I start at so heavy a grit? This is 100 grit. Um, watching somebody else earlier today on, on YouTube who talked about going to 80 grit, um, whatever it was they were turning, the finish they had, most people say, oh, that feels like about a 220 grit finish. We can start there and work up. And he said, no, I'm going to start at 80 because he showed – in the wood, there were some compressed fibers. Some, he had some stripes of compressed fibers, and that 80 grit would bring it all back out. So uh, I'm kind of of that school. Um, I'm going to start pretty rough. Spend most of my time on that very first grit, and then my other grits, I, I speed through pretty quickly. Just a matter of knocking the sanding marks out. That was 100. This is 150. Like I said, I'll come back. I'll probably come all the way back to 100, 100 grit after a while and or maybe tomorrow and finish this up. We have one more other, one other thing that I want to do to this before we glue the lid in. I'll show you here in just a minute. All right, that was 240. This is 320. And 320 is typically as, as uh, fine as I go. Uh, typically, I will use my abrasive paste and then wax after that. Or if I want something else, uh, a heavier finish, I'll do my abrasive paste and then whatever other finish I want to put on there. The 320, if I'm doing abrasive paste, 320 is for me, that's plenty high. I don't need to go any higher. All right. Whoa, I'm sorry. Hit that with my banjo. And everybody's swimming for just a second there. Yeah, definitely needs more standing on this little cove that I turned up here on the side. But let's do one other thing here real quick. And for that, I'm going to grab my half inch skew. Turn my speed back up. Okay, I got a question for you real quick on that. Okay, yeah. Does that thing get hot? Nope. Hmm. What, the sample or the wood? The piece that you're holding. Um, it, it gets hot enough to smoke. Um, you can see that black edge on it right there. That's where I've been burning Yeah. Uh, some lines. Uh, yeah, it does, but I'm, I'm not holding it where it's getting hot. I'm holding it back right. a little way. Okay. So. That's cool. First line didn't burn very well, so. It'd be easier to use than the wire. Yeah, I usually use the wire on the spindle, so I would use a wire in this instance, but I use the acrylic on the face because you can't use the wire on the face. Hmm. Well, what a, oh, there it is. Because I, th I actually think the wire is easier to use than the spindle. I do too. I like, 
I like the wire. Um, um, I, I was using wire extensively and, and uh, where is my wire? I've got one here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Uh, there's my wire, got the handles on it and everything. Um, I was using this and in a video and uh, had lots of compliments on how good the line, the burn lines look. And um, I got two guys who gave me down the road. Oh, you're not holding that right. You're going to, yeah. I said, forget it. I'm not, not, I've gotten out of the habit of using the wire now. And I use the, my, uh, um, yeah, whatever that's called. Not for Micah. What is that called? Um, veneer. It's like acrylic veneer. For Micah works. Yeah, well, countertop, works it's great. countertop laminate. Yeah, yeah, laminate. Yeah. Um, anyway, that it that works great, and uh, um, I think it's it's becoming universally accepted as more safe than the than the wire. So, but no, it, uh, Brenda, that does it gets hot right there on the edge, but it, the the heat does not transfer. Gotcha. So. There's that. There's the lid. It will get glued in. Uh, probably I'll use some, uh, uh, I don't have any thick CA, so I'll probably use some clear Gorilla Glue. Uh, you could use the regular stuff because it's not going to be seen. But there it is. Uh, just that simple. A little, just a little pointed top. It's not a sharp, um, nice little curve coming up to it. A little, just a very slight OG from there. Yeah, with a, there you go from there out to the to the edge and then drops down with a, a little cove and three burn lines in the cove that'll get uh, a wax finish and then there it is about mislocating my jar here you got to just imagine this is glued on so there you go fill that with uh mold cider or whatever you know whatever your heart desire it can even be dried beans with a, a special flavor packet or something. Um, maybe stick a, a piece of ribbon on on the jar underneath the rim here, and you you've got something that looks like something, and that can be passed down for years to come, or passed around the family. Passed around mm. the family, yes, absolutely. Yeah. What is the, yeah, the finished the size now? now? What's that? What is the finished size on that now? Finished size. Good question. It is. <laughs> we're still very some. I've still got fairly thick sides on here. It could be thinner. Uh, but it's right at three and a half inches wide and uh, inch and three eighths tall. And that so could, that be could come out of the two by four. Absolutely, it could. Um, this was a, a, a half log. It's, I think it's hickory. It smells like hickory. Um, that was sitting on my my shelf back here behind me. Um, a while ago, I pulled up a second piece just in case. Um, you can't tell what it is by, by that side, but you can by that side. Nice piece of black walnut. It was a cutoff from a log. Um, and it's uh, this is the end grain this direction it that would it would come up pretty i think if if i took my time and didn't break it so uh but that you know it's it just using up some scraps and it doesn't take very long we went through that in about 30 minutes and uh taking our time really uh, i could most all of us if we were doing them we could get it where we could get them down to about 10 15 minutes a piece and knock those things out you could have a, a case of the jars uh, filled up pretty quick. It would take me about an hour. <laughs> Your first one maybe, but then you you get it, you get it down. Um, mm -hmm. Those uh, Christmas trees I've been doing, my first one took me about 20, 25 minutes, and this last, I don't know, the last uh, 20, 25 of them, I did them, uh, it was 10 to 15 minutes each. So, you know, anything you do over and over again, you get it down pretty quickly. Right. 
even those burn lines, those burn lines can come out very good, but that's partly because I'm not sure why. I could I didn't get my my grooves very wide for one thing. I thought I was keeping them keeping them thinner on purpose, and I got them too thin. I think. So anyway, and use the wire again. <laughs> nice job, Doug. Well, yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Doug. Pardon me. I, I, Doug did a great job. 